Ready. Okay, and the name of the engine is? Oh, is it running? Yes. Oh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, move in close to it now. Okay. Um, this is the little foot engine. Okay. It's a two-stage uh, air engine uh, built by myself and uh, little foot. Mm -hmm. uh, technician who helped me a couple of years ago uh, when I was first building it. And this is the second version of it. I had to put a new cam on it because the other one was too small or something. And um, so I haven't tried it yet. And I'm just going to turn it on and see what happens. Um, let's see. This is the bypass valve right here. And this is the valve that lets the air into the engine. And this is the valve that lets the air out of the engine. Those are all manually operated. And I usually use this valve on the exhaust to uh, regulate the speed. And then let's see what else is there. This, this is a valve that operates the low pressure cylinder, which is stage two. The gauge for it is right here. And this is the valve that operates the high pressure cylinder here, uh, stage one. And here's the um, gauge for that. According to the compressor, we got about uh, 108 PSI ready to go in and the air goes in right here. And then this is a heat exchanger between the two uh, cylinders that should absorb heat from the atmosphere to warm up the air after it expands here in the first piston. So I'm going to go ahead and try it now and see what happens. I think it's going to work pretty good because it worked good before when we had it but the cam wasn't good enough so I've changed it. First, I'll open this up. Kind of jumpy because you never know what's going to happen. I'm just going to open this part of the way. Mm -hmm. So now we got air. Maybe 100, about 110, 111 psi according to that gauge going in ready to go to stage one and I'm going to take some of that air and let it into this uh, heat exchanger inner heater it's called between the cylinders so that stage two will also have a little air going to it when we start up Boom. motion and we'll try and keep about 50 psi in there and then once I open this exhaust up and let the air move through the engine, it should start going. Everything's still in place? Yeah, everything looks fine. There's, uh, it's unloaded. There's, there's nothing on the shaft. It's not doing any work right now, so it might try to move real fast. I'm going to close this a little bit. Okay, here goes. Must be between uh, stages. There's one place here on the cam where it can get stuck where one cylinder is on exhaust, which is this one right now, the one on the right, the high pressure, and where the other stage is on cutoff, which is, in other words, the valve's closed and no air is going to either one right now. Did you have a question? Uh, yeah, the red light's blinking on the camera. Well, that means we're all going to blow up. Do you know? <laughs> well, that means the battery's gone. Uh -oh. Well, let's change and put on the other battery. Okay. Turn it off. Don't turn it on. Okay. So, got the camera going, and I added this uh, big pulley on here so that I can push it with my hand past the dead point and get it started. So let's see what happens. Still have 40 psi here in the inner heater. Still got about 105, 103 psi in the main intake. So turn on the air to the engine. 
open the exhaust so the air can move through the engine. And I'm going to open it just a little ways because I want to maybe run it a little slow the first time. It goes counterclockwise, so that's the way I'm going to push it. Here it goes. Let's see if it works. Okay, open a little more. Open a little more. It does something. Mm -hmm. It hasn't broken yet. That's good. Mm -mm. I'm going to turn down the juice on the oilers. Getting a little oil coming through. Turn off the camera for a second. I'm going to open up the area of the engine all the way. I'm going to give a little more on the bypass. About 60 psi. And here goes. Wow. It needs a load on it. It really does. Because it goes too fast. I'm going to leave the bypass open a little bit and see how that affects it. Leave it open a little bit more. Whoa! I don't want it open all the way. It's closed right now. I'm going to open the, open the exhaust all the way. See what happens. I don't think anything's broken yet. Ooh. Got some plastic parts on here that I'm not so sure of, but I guess they're going to be okay. It's tending to stall right here. Now let's see here, it's getting ready to go on to exhaust on this side. Which I guess that must mean it's going on to intake on this side. Yeah, it stalls in that same spot all the time. No, that's a different spot. Open up the bypass a little bit. Just a little. Since it's made, whoa, look at that. It's killing the cam, the plywood cam. Look at that. See those grooves? Show the, show the home audience. Can you see from here? See the grooves there? I don't know if you can see them. Yeah, it's killing the cam. Oh, yeah. See? Hmm. Huh. Hmm. So you, you're going to... Oh. It's uh, November uh, 16th, I think, Sunday.
about 9.15, 9.20 p.m. And I got the engine working pretty good. <clears throat> I coated the edge of the cam with epoxy. Because that other uh, cam follower was gouging into it. And I replaced those cam followers with real ones from the parts store. <clears throat> Tried it with a flywheel, didn't seem to make much difference, but it wasn't a very big flywheel. But then I ended up putting these Lovejoy couplers on the shaft anyways, because I want to do like it does in the Bob Neal's patent and run the uh, run it at a one to one shaft ratio RPM wise. I uh, changed that shape there. This one right here, I made it circular. So the distance would be right. I'm kind of excited. I'm forgetting all the right words to say. But I've got it hooked up here to the Bob Neal tank. Air goes in right here. Comes out at the other end. Goes along that hose and up into the engine. Right there. And then it goes in through the oiler. See this valve right here? There's a gauge for that valve. There's an air in the engine right now, I guess. And uh, down into the small piston. This is a one and one half inch diameter cylinder uh, and one and one half inch stroke. No, it's a three inch stroke. And from there, it goes back out through the valve <coughs> into this inner heater. Which is the opposite of the intercooler you see on a two-stage compressor. Absorbs a little heat from the atmosphere. Not much because it's a rudimentary inner heater. <clears throat> then goes the second stage cylinder through this hose and this oiler. Oilers are for lubricating the valves. Because these uh, Rexroth valves aren't supposed to go over 18 cycles per uh, minute without some kind of oil misting and then it goes down into this through the head here and into the big piston which is the second stage or the low pressure cylinder that's three inch by three inch cylinder and then back out and here's where it exhausts I control it here with this exhaust valve that's how I turn it on and off this valve over here is for letting air in to the engine and this valve over there by that gauge is a uh, bypass to let air into the uh, inner heater so that there will be air going into the second stage when you start the engine and then I just close the valve I just let it in and about 40 psi and then stop that's where it runs about 40 psi with uh, about 100, 110 uh, PSI going into the first stage. Uh, <clears throat> the problem with the engine before when it was stalling a lot was apparently uh, the valves were mounted kind of off. I took some measurements and figured out what to change and I moved the valves. I actually cut the platform apart here so that I can move the two valves away from each other and uh, this one I had to move twice before I actually got it right and now they're close enough to where the engine actually works um, it seems very noisy uh, not with the air but with clattering banging sounds and I think what that is is uh, when the let's see the valve has a strong spring on it it's easy to pull with this lever but if I was just to push on it right here with my hand, it's very hard to push that spring in. And uh, so what happens is, I think, that's the sound you're hearing. As the cam goes around, you're saying bang, 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 bang. As these go back, slap against the cam. The way to get around that is to use an eccentric, like a steam engine, instead of a cam. 
And I've never done that, so I'm stuck with this noisy, clattering thing, I guess, for now. Uh, well, I guess I could try running at a lower speed, but as long as it doesn't break, I guess it can make as much noise as it wants. The reason I'm taping this right now is um, the equalizer, which I kind of uh, affectionately call the uh, magic valve, which is right here inside the tank, uh, seems to be working. And I've been working on this um, Bob Neal working model idea since 1988 or 87 or so and uh, this is the first time I've ever uh, seen it uh, I think work and the reason I think it's working is because I've got a fairly efficient air engine uh, in terms of how much air it uses for the power it puts out uh, I've never had that before that's why I bothered to build this crazy looking contraption uh, now for its size this this engine uh, doesn't have much power, but that's the, the problem with uh, a two-stage engine is it's pretty big, and it also, you know, it's pretty heavy because it's a cast iron compressor that I've converted, and if you made the same thing out of, uh, like, stainless steel cylinders, then it would be a different story, it would be very lightweight, still take up some space, though. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, run it for the video. Oh, by the way, that electric motor is not hooked up. It's not doing anything. I'll show you the, the plug is right here. That's the motor I bought to put on this compressor. But now I'm using the compressor for this working model instead. So I'm going to videotape this next test and you'll see this gauge which is the tank air is over a hundred and it's gonna stay over a hundred pretty much because I've got I've got it hooked up to the main compressor running electric off the wall the point here not to the show self-fueling uh, because this compressor isn't gonna put that much air in but the point to show it putting any air in at all uh, and especially at a lower pressure than what's in the tank because we're putting low pressure air into a high pressure tank at least that's what we hope we're doing and uh, so this gauge on the compressor shows that the compressor builds up pressure and builds up and builds up and then it hits 40 psi and stops building at which point it, it keeps running air keeps going in, this is where it goes in. I should put a filter in there, but I've never got around to it. And you can feel the air going in. And it sucks your hand right up to it. So it's continuing to put air in, but the pressure won't go over 40 here, which means the, the uh, magic valve Bob Neal's equalizer is working, apparently. Now, there's one possible catch. There's a leak right here. It's not a very loud leak, so I'm assuming that the air isn't going out real fast, but that might explain why it seems to be working. So I have to fix that leak. But before I take it all apart, I want to uh, videotape this in case I die or, you know, I get struck by lightning to not tomorrow or something. And that way at least there will be this videotape. And it could be that the reason it's not building up more than 40 psi at the compressor is that once it gets to 40 then any air past that is going out of the leak I don't know that's possible but I'll have to fix the leak to prove that whether or not that's happening if I fix the leak and run it and then the air goes over the compressor air goes over 40 then uh, obviously the leak was making it look like it was working so Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the air in now. The air's already in the tank. i just got to open some valves and air up the engine and get it working. So, 
Okay, now let's see this. Let's air into the engine. Let's see the gauge hop up there. There's some air in the engine already. It's hard to do with a short cord on the video because I don't think the battery has any charge. So. Let's see now. We're going to let air in through the bypass into the inner heater there. Uh, up to about 40. That's how much it runs at, so that's all we'll give it to start with. And uh, the next step is to go over here, turn it on. <clears throat> this will allow air to move through it by opening up the exhaust. And it has to be started by hand, which is my least favorite part, especially right now because the only thing I have to pull on is the cam. Whoa! Okay. Now I'm getting ready to start it by hand. Okay, so let's watch me mash my fingers. If so, it'll be the last time I mash those particular fingers, because I won't have any fingers there after they're mashed. Okay. I'm gonna put my glove on. I don't know if it'd do any good. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, I took it apart here. This is a brass thing that was in it when I got it. It used to be a big huge air cylinder as in it had a piston in it and the piston shaft came through this brass bushing and I uh, altered it. Had somebody put some threads in it so I could thread pipe into it here. And uh, before I took it apart I forgot to figure out exactly where the leak was coming from but it was one of these joints here. So I just took it out here and put more Teflon tape on it and I tightened this. That was not very tight. And I tightened this going into here. And I tightened the screw on the hose clamp and I tightened this joint and put new Teflon tape on the and put it back together. And so uh, see if it still leaks and see what happens. The tank pressure's down to 50, 60, 50, 60, 70, 80, down to 90, but that big compressor will come on pretty soon, so uh, time to reach in there and do what I recommend that no one does, which is to reach in there and turn the thing on so that it moves through it, 
It's always kind of makes me jumpy because I've been doing this on, on paper for 18 years, but I'm not used to being around the actual moving parts themselves. So uh, here goes. We want to see that go up to 40 or whatever, and we want to hear whether it causes this over here leak to still happen. So here goes. <clears throat> I think I already, I already put air in, the, in there a little bit. Put a little more in. Okay. <clears throat> 